Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it a beautiful one. Today I'm going to share with you how to light anything up in Photoshop. There are three stages to it. First of all, we need to create a dark base, a dark environment for the light to turn on. Secondly, we need to create a light source. Create that light, that bulb or whatever that is, we need to turn that on. And finally, we need to create the effects of light. If there's light, it's falling on something, right? And if there's light, there has to be some kind of flares. We'll go through these stages step by step. It's gonna be super easy, super fun. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you wish to download this photo and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. First of all, let's create a dark base. For it, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. We're gonna choose a dark color lookup table. So from here, let us choose foggy night. It already creates that night. But then again, it also makes the shadows faded. So how do we take care of that? Double click on the right hand side of the layer. This takes you to the layer style dialog box. Inside of it, we need to take it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer or the layer that lies under it, okay? So let's take it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer. It says it right there inside of the blend if section. But this is gonna be very, very harsh, right? So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and make the transition smoother. About this much is fine, 185, 186. Hit OK once you're satisfied. But this is not dark enough. How do we make it darker? Simply duplicate it. Press Ctrl or Command J with that color lookup already selected. There you go, more darker. But the transition seems odd, so we're gonna double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it all the way to the right hand side. This is dark, but we still need to create that night effect or evening effect. For it, create another color lookup adjustment layer and this time let us choose this straightforward one which says night from day. This is too much. Let's decrease the opacity to about 40%. That's nice but the bright areas are getting sacrificed too. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and simply just take it away from the bright areas. This is harsh, so you know what to do. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and just take it all apart. There you go. So we have created that dark base. So here's the before, here's the after. Now all of this darkness that we have added, we don't want it on the light source. So how do we take that away? Select the first adjustment, hold the Shift key, Select the last adjustment, everything in the series would be selected. Then press Ctrl or Command G to group it. Now let us create a mask for the group by clicking on the mask button right there. Simply take a brush, black as the foreground color, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Simply just zoom in and paint over the headlight, that's all. Let's name this layer, Dark Base. The next stage is creating the light source and this is super fun to do. You can apply this technique throughout Photoshop and all different kinds of applications. Simply create a new layer by clicking on the new layer button right there. Take the brush tool and choose a warmer, brighter color. Double click on the foreground color square box right there and let us choose this color. This one would work fine. Hit OK. Make the brush a bit larger and all you have to do, this is the most fun part, just dab like this. Now it does look a bit odd, but wait for it. Change the blend mode from normal to color dodge. Dodging means brightening and we're gonna add some color to it, so it's color dodge. There you go. Now do keep in mind, color dodge is a special blend mode. It's one of the eight special blend modes in Photoshop. And what does a special blend mode do and how is it special? With special blend mode, fill and opacity work differently. So if I decrease the fill, have a look, the projection is changing. Look at the light. It's looking so darn realistic. But with opacity, it's simply making it more and more transparent as we decrease the opacity. So that's the gist of a special blend mode. If you want to learn more about it, there are videos that you can watch. There's one more special thing we can do. Double click on the right hand side of the layer and just turn off transparency shapes layer and have a look at the change in projection. This is amazing, hit OK. Now, even if you move this, wherever you move it becomes a light source. So if I move it right here, it becomes the sun. You can decrease the fill and make it look like sun. So that is the idea here. Let's move it back to where it was, all right? Now control the fill. Let's keep it somewhere about 88, that's fine. This bulb just turned on, but it's not enough, so take the brush again and paint in a little more. That is nicer, that is very, very nice. Now to make the light glow even more, simply select that layer and press Ctrl or Command J and change the blend mode to overlay. 
Now, since overlay is not a special blend mode, I'm not trying to demean or offend overlay. I'm just saying, fill and opacity wouldn't be different. So let's increase the fill to 100 and decrease the opacity to about 50%. There you go, that's enough light. Before we move on to step three, organization is important. Select both of these layers. First one, hold the control or command, select the second one, control or command G, and this is the light source. The next step is simply creating the effects of light. Where is the light falling? What kind of lens flare is it creating? So on and so forth. So first of all, if the light is turned on, it's not possible that the light is not falling anywhere. There's the road, there's this tire right there. There has to be some light there, right? So for it, you guessed it right, Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now, take the right point to the left just like this. Right now, don't worry about the color, just worry about the brightness. Let's collapse it, select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Simply take the brush, take a soft round brush and just dab right here with white. Press X to toggle between the foreground and the background colors. There you go, we have created the tire light. Any other place where light will show through? This road right here? just a little bit of it. Now we definitely have painted extra, so select the mask, make the brush smaller, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. If they're not already black and white, you can always press D for default colors, and then simply erase the extras. Now that you have created the light, we need to worry about the color of the light. For it, let's go back to curves, double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer. The first thing that comes to mind is that we need to add yellows to it. How do we add yellows? What is the opposite of yellow? Blue. RGB, opposite of CMY. Red is the opposite of cyan. Green is the opposite of magenta. And blue is the opposite of yellow. So we need to take the blues down from the highlights to show up a little bit of the yellows. But it's becoming a bit greenish. So how do we control that? Let's go to green and simply decrease the green. That's all something like this. It's becoming more and more yellow, so you need to control how much of what you want. And then let's go back to RGB and increase it even more. Or let's control it, this is too much. Let's go back to blues and just control the values, see what works best for you. This seems about right, but the light at the bottom is too much and doesn't look very natural. So let's take the brush with the mask selected. Let's decrease the flow to about 5% and erase it slightly you know, have just a slight hint of it. Now, the other very important thing we can do is add some light flares. Now, you can do it with gradients, but then again, a more easier and creative and fun way of doing it is that I took a torch, I turned all the lights off in my room and took a photo of it with my phone. I didn't even use my camera. So with a phone, I took a picture of this torch and maybe we can use flares from this. So you can download this photo if you wish. Let's just drag it and drop it onto the canvas. Hit enter or return change the blend mode to screen. There you go. Now let's adjust it. Press Ctrl or Command T, place it right here. Let's zoom in. So we have placed it in one corner. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click right here to bring the anchor point right there. If you cannot see the anchor point, make sure this is checked. And then hold the Alt key or the Option key and make it larger from that point. Just align the lights like this slightly. Now I'm going to place the anchor point right here and probably stretch it a bit. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and also hold the Shift key to kind of stretch it to fill up the entire area. Hit Enter or Return. Now this is looking very nice but the color just isn't right. First of all, let's decrease the opacity to about 74. That's nice. But even now, the intensity of the flare is right but the headlight area is becoming too bright. So let's create a mask by clicking on the Mask button. Take the brush and let's just erase that area entirely. It's happening very slow, you know why? Because the flow is slow. Let's increase it back to 100. Now, of course, this is way too much reduction. So select the mask, open up the properties. If you cannot see the properties, go to window and make sure properties is checked right here and simply decrease the density. The density is like opacity for the mask. Let's decrease it to about 22. And now it is time for us to change the color of the lens flare. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. Whatever we do will affect the entire thing, right? First of all, let's reset it. Let's limit it just to the lens flare. To do it, simply click on this button or hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. You see this arrow? That means it's limited to the lens flare. We need to completely colorize it. Let's check colorize. And now you can change the color to whatever you like. Let's keep it yellowish and let's decrease the saturation slightly. About this much is fine, but the lens flare is all over and you can see the edges. For it, let's create a group of all of this. 
Select the hue saturation, hold the controller command, select the lens flare layer, press controller command G and simply create a mask by clicking on the mask button. Take the brush, take a soft round brush, you know what to do, just erase the edges. And finally, do not forget to group these layers. Select the first one, hold the control or command, select the second one, control or command G. And these are the light effects. Done. The difference between before and after is going to be massive. So here is the before and here is the after. On top of this, as a finishing touch, you can use generative fill to remove the distractions. You can do some color grading. That's all up to you. But that's basically how to light up stuff in Photoshop. It's not just creating the source of light, but there are stages to it. First of all, we need to create a dark environment for the light to turn on. Secondly, we need to create that light source. And finally, that light source will emit some light. It's going to fall on some areas. It's going to create some flares here and there. We need to create those as well. So that's all for this video. By the way, if you like the music in our videos, do definitely check out Epidemic Sounds, the place where we get all our music. And we have been using it for four or five, I don't know how many years. The best part is you can separate the different stems of the music. That's crazy. You don't have to worry about copyright strikes or takedowns. And you can even use their AI features to bring in your video. And according to your video clip, it will suggest you music. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here on cloud.